Hello, beauties and beats. Welcome to another episode of The Sound and The View. I hope I find you content and happy. I recently re-released one of 81 poems from the Tao. I've learned more about sound recording and have decided to go back in time and apply this knowledge to some of my earlier spoken word. I've also added photos of the beautiful city I call my home, Vancouver. So, in a way, you are seeing through my eyes, and as I offer some editorial on these poems, I share my sound and view. One is the poem that manifested most closely to previous interpretations and translations of the Tao Te Ching. Not much additional creativity flowed for this one, perhaps because it is the verse that offers the most enduring and important lesson for peace. It begins with the words, The Tao that is named is not the Tao. To my mind, this is a reminder to the individual to maintain humility in all things, including the promotion of faith, wisdom, philosophy, and opinions. There are many religions currently in the world and countless sects and congregations, each promoting differing variations of beliefs and cultural practices and adherence to teachings of different sages. And then there are atheists and agnostics who adhere to science and or what can be known solely through the five physical senses. None comes close to defining the Tao. Most sages have adhered to human psychology and the placement of the Tao as something that exists outside of the believer. Or perhaps this is how their teachings have been interpreted by human psychology. Science and rationality adherents believe because the divine cannot be proven or disproven through rationality, or experimentation, it does not exist. The Tao Te Ching reminds us that the divine is ever-changing and expanding. It has no limits. That which has no limits cannot be defined, cannot be truly named, cannot be pinned down. When you insist that your version is the true one, you have placed limits on the divine you place limits on creation. To the atheist, I would ask, is there a limit to what you can think? Can a thought be measured? Not the response of your brain, but the thought itself. You know thoughts are real, but if you were to remain silent, there would be no scientific or rational proof of your thoughts. Just because something cannot be measured with science does not suggest its lack of existence. For the divine is felt every day by millions. To you, atheists, I say, meditate. See what you find. The Tao does not have limits. That which is created does. Then, not really. Because if what is created is aware of itself, it possesses mind. And as long as resistance to change is not great, then that mind will continue to learn and create within the whole, the Tao. If resistance is great, it goes on repeat. So the Tao exists within you infinitely through your mind and you exist within the Tao, which is infinite. Remember, if you are practicing humility, you would never seek to truly define the Tao, and certainly not insist on your version of it. How does one practice humility? By seeking to let go of ego. The ego insists in order to maintain its survival and reproduction of its ideals, body, and DNA. 
I said seek to let go of ego. Even if it were possible, you do not want to completely rid yourself of ego. Because individuality within the whole is also wonderful and a valuable thing leading to increased creation. If we all thought the same, creation would be kaputs. You do want to control and guide the ego with self-awareness, for without self-awareness you remain more creation than creator. That is, you operate on programming. The information in your DNA you were born with and the beliefs of the culture you were born into. Because this programming often runs contrary to the expansion of your psyche and creation itself, the more you hold on to ego, the more your mind and body will suffer. You may not realize it, but it shows on your face and body with aging. I once had a Buddhist tell me, just about out of the gates, that I liked to know things. I could not argue, which at the time was a wonder in itself. I'm also an artist and I'm always thinking of new ideas. I have one active brain. And so the addition of Taoism to meditation helped to use that active brain a little more in the pursuit of enlightenment and a little less in the pursuit of ego. Remember, when we pursue ego, we tend to suffer. The opening page of 81 offers the wonder and healing of the universe lies just beyond your thoughts and ideals. So let go of those ideals, beauties and beats, just a little, and open up those thoughts to what is new. I promise you will find wonder and you will find healing. You will find that which connects us all. It is there for you always. Namaste, all you beautiful people. Talk to you next time.